Hey, I'm Cameron Flatt, and this is Everyone's a Critic. Normally, I would review a movie here, but this last weekend was a dumpster fire for new releases, so let's look ahead to November instead. This upcoming weekend is rather impressive, with three notable releases on November 4th. Hacksaw Ridge sees the return of Mel Gibson to the director, director's chair. His maliciously hateful outbursts aside, the man made Braveheart, so shut up. It's about a World War II medic, played by Andrew Garfield, who refuses to partake in any violence, but feels duty-bound by his Christian beliefs to still serve his country. Essentially, this will mostly be the boot camp scene from the first Captain America, but I think there will be a lot of heart and some excellent visuals. Next up, Loving is the story of a real mixed-race couple in late 50s Virginia that fought the state government to stay together. It has three, potential, uh, three phenomenal leads in film veterans Joel Edgerton, Ruth Nega, and Michael Shannon. It also has writer-director Jeff Nichols, whose three previous films, Mud, Take Shelter, and Midnight Special, are all well regarded for strong performances and stories. A true story of people overcoming racism is absolutely nothing new, but there is a lot of talent behind this one. One thing I know for sure, for sure, Joel Edgerton was able to make me cry in his movie Warrior, and I will bet he can do it again. Doctor Strange is the next movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which means if you are planning on seeing Avengers 3 and possibly even Guardians of the Galaxy 2 or Thor 3, it's probably a good idea to check this one out. Benedict Cumberbatch stars as brilliant yet cocky surgeon Dr. Stephen Strange. When a car accident destroys his hands and thus his career, his life is sent into a downward spiral. Then, for some reason, mystical forces choose him to be the Earth's Sorcerer Supreme, meaning he is a wizard that will protect the Earth from some evil magic people. The cast will also include Ch 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 Chewetel, Ch Ch the guy from 12 Years a Slave, uh, Hannibal's Mad Mickelsons, and all-around incredible thespian Tilda Swinton. The movie's trailer promises LSD levels of trippy visuals and hopefully a mix-up of the normal Marvel formula. On November 11th, we will get to see Arrival. It does not appear to be m about much more than the first contact with alien life but the director has an impressive range of genres, with his last three movies being Sicario, Enemy, and Prisoners. So I trust him to at least do something interesting. Also, any movie starring Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, Forrest Whitaker, and Michael Stolberg already has my attention. On the weekend, Shut In will also be released. This could potentially be a legitimately scary ghost story or psychological thriller. A child therapist, played by Naomi Watts, finds herself resenting her catatonic son, played by Stranger Things, Charlie Heaton. She finds relief by taking in a young orphan boy, but he soon goes missing during a snow snowstorm. Watts and her son find themselves seemingly haunted by the missing boy's jealous spirit. Did her son have something to do with the disappearance? Is there even really a ghost? I am truly surprised this one didn't get released in October, because I probably would have seen it on Halloween. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them comes to us on the 18th and starts a new series in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. If you didn't already know about this one, then you probably won't care much, but for what it's worth, it takes place in the 1920s with Eddie Redmayne as a researcher of the world's magical creatures. The creative team includes David Yates, the director of the last four Harry Potter films, and J.K. Rowling, who's wrote the screenplay for this one. I am not much of a Harry Potter fan by any definition, but I am intrigued by the movie's further exploring this expansive fantasy world in a decade mostly untouched by modern Hollywood. It also features the talents of Colin Firth, Ezra Miller, Zoe Kravitz, Dan Fogler, Ron Perlman, and John Voight. Damn. And finally, November's last weekend has Disney's Moana. Now, I absolutely despise Disney as a production studio. Any movie with the Disney logo above the title that isn't accompanied by the Pixar logo as well is guaranteed to follow the exact same formula Disney has used time and time again, and we, the audience, need to stop treating it as an acceptable practice. This is my reason for not seeing Moana. On the other hand, to not make myself look like an absolute bonehead if this one is, is the trend breaker, I do have some reasons to look forward to it. I like the idea of something similar to Lilo and Stitch, because even I like that one. It has two of the funniest people on the planet, Alan Tudyk and Jermaine Clement, the Rock seems to be putting in a lot of effort and charisma, as he almost always does, and the animation looks fabulous. There, you happy Disney fangirls. Okay, I'm done. Skull off back to the hosts. 